What's up YouTube, my name's Rhett. I'm a software engineer and entrepreneur living in Houston, Texas. A few weeks ago, I did a tutorial about how to set up a fully air-gapped cold card Mark IV from scratch. And I'll leave a link to that video up here somewhere in the cards. And in that tutorial, I use a desktop wallet called Sparrow Wallet. And while Sparrow Wallet is incredibly functional, the UI UX is pretty doo-doo compared to a bunch of the Bitcoin wallets that have been released on mobile today. My favorite Bitcoin mobile wallet is called Blue Wallet and it's available on iOS and on Android. So today I'm gonna be taking you guys through how you can view your cold card wallet balance and interact with your cold card through the blue wallet interface on either your phone, your tablet, or even your desktop computer. Because blue wallet is available on all of those different platforms. So go down below and smash the like button for the greatest user experience Bitcoin app of all time so far, and let's level up your brains. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do here is we need to take our cold card and we need to export the wallet from the cold card here onto our blue wallet. So let's go ahead and power on our cold card. We'll go ahead and put in our pin here. All right, and now that we're in our cold card here, let's scroll down to advanced tools and click on check mark, and then we'll click on export wallet. And we'll go ahead and export the wallet as an Electrum wallet. This is gonna save a skeleton Electrum wallet file. The file created is sensitive in terms of privacy, but should not compromise funds. So let's go ahead and click on check mark and let's create a native SegWit wallet for the lowest fees. So now cold card is going to generate our Electrum wallet file. And if you don't have an SD card in there, it's gonna tell you that you don't have an SD card in there. So let's go ahead and put in our SD card. Go ahead and click check and do native SegWit again. So now it's generated the file on the SD card called newwallet.json. And now we can exit back to the main screen and we're going to eject our micro SD card and we're going to plug it into our iPhones. So I will see you in a second to do just that. All right guys, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to open up Blue Wallet on our iPhones. And you can do this exact same thing with Android. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a new wallet and we're gonna create a wallet using the SD card that we just exported from the cold card. So we'll plug in our SD card to our SD card to Lightning adapter here. And if you don't have one of these, you can do this exact same process using something like Dropbox. So we've plugged our little dongle in here and we're gonna come over to add a wallet and we're gonna click on import wallet and we're gonna click on import from file. We'll click on this little file icon down here. This is gonna bring up our folder structure here on our iPhones. So we're going to just go to the top level of the folder structure. And then you should see your SD card here at the top level because you plugged in your SD card obviously to the iPhone. And so you'll see no name right here. And then we'll click on this new wallet.json that we just created today. Blue Wallet recognizes that this is going to be a watch only wallet because we obviously still need to sign using the cold card. So it's taking its time here. And then we'll get this message that our wallet has been successfully imported. And we'll see up here, it says cold card import and it's got a little number up there. We can change the name of the wallet if we just come up here and change the name. So let's call it cold card import YouTube demo. We'll see it's a watch only wallet and we're using it with our hardware wallet. So let's go ahead and click on save. And now let's go ahead and receive some Bitcoin to this address. So we'll copy this Bitcoin address here. We'll come over to our Casa mobile wallet and we'll hit send and we'll just go ahead and send $10 of Bitcoin. We'll choose the recipient. We will enter the address. Once we paste the address, we're going to set this to fast. We're going to review and send and we're going to swipe up to confirm. So now this transaction should be leaving our Casa mobile wallet and it should be heading over to our cold card wallet. All right, guys, so you'll see that if I click into the wallet now, it's been about 10 minutes. The transaction has come over from my Casa mobile wallet and it has one confirmation already. All right, guys, so next let's try to send some Bitcoin out of this wallet. So we'll come up here to our other Bitcoin mobile wallet, just a fresh wallet with no Bitcoin in it, and we'll click down here on receive. We will copy this Bitcoin address, come back up here to our cold card wallet, and we will click down here on send, and we just pasted the Bitcoin address right up there. I'll add a note here that just says to demo, and I'll send $5. Let's hit next. So now this is what's called a partially signed Bitcoin transaction. And so we're going to take this partially signed Bitcoin Bitcoin transaction because we have to sign it with our cold card. We're going to take the file from Blue Wallet. We're going to put the file on the SD card. We're going to load the file on the SD card onto the cold card. We're going to sign the transaction on the cold card. That's going to generate a new signed transaction file. And then we're going to put that signed transaction file back into the Blue Wallet. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll click on export to file down here and we'll just come down here to save to files. And I'll go all the way back out to my SD card 
card and I will save the file right here on my SD card. So now the file should be on the SD card. We can go ahead and close out of our blue wallet and just eject our little micro SD card here from our iPhone. Next, we'll put the micro SD card back into the cold card here and we will connect the cold card back to power. Go ahead and put in our pen and then we'll come in here to ready to sign. Choose a partially signed Bitcoin file. I have two currently on my SD card, so I'm going to have to pick the one that I just generated from the blue wallet. Losing track of where the camera is here. So go ahead and hit check. And it's actually going to be this top one that I just generated from the blue wallet. So let's click on that one. It looks like we're sending about 25,000 Satoshis to this BC1 address. I can come back here and just verify that that address is correct. Looks like it's starting with BC1 QD0. That's correct on the blue wallet. And it's ending with 9E5, which is also correct. So this address is the address that I'm trying to send to. There's my network fee and there's my change back. So I'm going to go ahead and click on check. We're signing the transaction. And now our partially signed Bitcoin transaction file has been updated. The updated PSBT is all of that stuff that Blue Wallet called the file, some really long number and then signed. So that is the signed part of the transaction, but it also generates a file called finalized, which is the entire transaction. So if we wanted to upload this full transaction to some other wallet, we could do that as well. But for now, we're going to just take that signed version of the file up here. We're going to put the SD card back into our iPhones and we're going to upload that signed version of the file. And so now we are ready to export that partially signed Bitcoin transaction. Come back here and we will stick our little card back in there and we'll come back here to our cold card on blue wallet and we'll go ahead and click on send. Up here on the three dots, we're going to import a transaction. We're going to go to our SD card and then I'm actually going to click on the final version of the transaction because I lost the partially signed version of the transaction. So let's go ahead and click on final. Here is the transactions hex signed and ready to be broadcasted on the network. Let's go ahead and click on send now. And there we go. So if we click on done, we'll see that we have a pending transaction with zero confirmations over here on the cold card. And if we come over to the mobile wallet and we update the mobile wallet, this might take a little while, just like it did before with the cold card. But hopefully in about 10 minutes, I'll come back to you guys and there will be an actually while I was just talking right now, the transaction actually showed up pending zero confirmations for about 25,000 Satoshis. So we just sent a partially signed Bitcoin transaction from our blue wallet using the cold card to sign the transaction. And we've sent the funds from this view only version of our cold card. And you can see that's view only, it's sort of grayed out to our Bitcoin mobile wallet, a hot wallet on our iPhones that was just created right here within blue wallet. So in my opinion, blue wallet is not only one of the most aesthetically designed Bitcoin wallets ever. It is also one of the most functional Bitcoin wallets that I've ever run into. It's giving you functionality similar to something like Sparrow Wallet on a mobile app that you can carry around with you on any sort of different device. And on top of that, Blue Wallet is fully open source. So if you wanted to, you could build it and run it totally on your own, which is really cool. For non-tech people, open source basically means that if Blue Wallet made a change that the user base didn't like, or if the company behind Blue Wallet ever went out of business, that any of us using Blue Wallet could just go up to GitHub, copy down all the code and turn it into level up your brain wallet or something like that. And we'd have a fully functional release of whatever the latest version of Blue Wallet was that we all like to use. We really just scratched the surface today on what you can do with the combination between Blue Wallet and Cold Card. So comment down below if you're interested in even more Blue Wallet content and I'll start to release some more here on the channel. Also, let me know down below if you have any questions about what we covered in the demo today. I do still respond to all the comments. Go down below and like the video if you learned something and subscribe for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.